the biggest issue because that's how you and watch this match i am so excited we're going to be starting here over on kamal's side of the field with a nest ball going through the deck as well as a compe in the active position so we've talked about pablo so many different varieties of how you can build dragapult ex how does this one stand out as far as that or i suppose what is the setup like how fast are we going to be trying to get into things if we're on kamal's side of the field I mean, you definitely want to build up your loss zone as soon as possible, especially because uh, once you see the Lugia, you know there's a looming threat of Iron Hand ZX, right? Yes. So Kamal's best answer to that is going to be that Radiant Charizard as Dragapult only does 200 damage. So it's going to be very crucial for Kamal to have that uh, ready to go. And that means probably powering it up with Mirage Gate. And therefore, you want those seven cards in the loss zone as soon as you can. Yeah, it's honestly a perfect pairing, uh, Mirage Gate into this deck. Of course, Dragapult EX having a fire and a psychic requirement for its energy attachment for Phantom Dive, which is what is going to be dealing all of that damage to the field. So Mirage Gate being able to search out those energy cards is beautiful here, but we got to get there first. We have to be, start stacking these cards into the Lost Zone in order to unlock the power of Mirage Gate. So that is what Kamal is going to be doing here, starting off with that Kumfei in the act. Flower selecting, going to have to choose one of those cards to go into the Lost Zone, the other to the hand. That's going to get Kamal another couple of Pokemon onto the field with this Buddy Buddy Poffin, bringing those Dreepy out. Yeah, Buddy Buddy Poffin, such a crucial card. So fantastic to find on turn one, but it does come at a heavy cost for Kamal with that Supra. Oof. There's only two copies, and of course, with only six energies and the one copy of Radiant Charizard that you probably want to reutilize. Ah, oh, that's already a, a tough start for Kamal, but he knows this, right? He Now he yeah. knows he only has access to one Supra, so that will probably affect his future decisions. Yep, we're looking at the second flower selecting now. It looks like another tough decision potentially here for Kamal, but it's going to be made a switch cart going into the Lost Zone, joining that Super Rod. We've already seen an additional switch being used for Kamal as well to get into that second Comfe here. Cramorant's going to join the fields, and that is going to be it for our first turn on Kamal's side. Alex Crackler over here. Let's take a look at the hands. There were a couple extra cards because Kamal did have at least one mulligan that I saw. Yep. So we're going to be seeing a couple extra cards that Alex gets to work with here. And a great ball is going to get us a great result here, Pablo, getting that Archeops out of the deck off the top seven cards. And speaking of great results, we see the Capturing Aroma, which with a Tails, you get a Basic. With a Heads, you get an Evolution. I yeah. think Alex will benefit from that tails as he will be able to find Luminion V and be able to find a way to discard those Archeops. That is so, so crucial. Now, a lot of players uh, have a love-hate relationship with capturing Aroma. Sometimes you want heads, you get tails. Sometimes you want tails and you get heads. But I think it's important to uh, plan your way around uh, whatever result you end up getting. Now, we see Alex is being very thorough with his price checking and making sure, as Lugia, it's very important to know yeah. exactly which energies you um, you can count on, especially the legacy energy, this brand new Twilight Masquerade mm. card. It's generally what brought Lugia to a brand new level. Well, as we work through the second Capturing Aroma, it's also going Ooh. to be a Tails here as well for Alex. So that's two basic Pokemon. Iron Hands is going to join us on the field immediately going down there. But yes, this legacy energy, talk about it more, Pablo. Yeah, Legacy Energy uh, essentially is that rainbow energy that uh, Lugia has really needed for a long, long time. Yes. And also, there's the merit of uh, the extra effect, which makes your Pokemon take, which makes your Pokemon give to your opponent one prize card less. And therefore, mm -hmm. that's really, really powerful because, speaking of one prizers that you mentioned earlier, yeah. yeah uh, like making having a single prizer Iron Hands is so, so huge. Yeah, it's brutal, honestly. You're taking extra prize cards, your opponent is taking less prize cards, and Alex Kreckler is on the path to getting to a, a board state like that. We saw the professor's research here that did discard one of our Archeops into the discard pile, and this, this is a fresh hand that we're working with on Alex's side. Yeah, he did actually have already the professor's research in hand, so didn't need that Luminion to discard the Archeops. Not the greatest follow-up afterwards, but now it's on Kamal's side of the field, does have yes. that call res, will be able to use two more Comphase, probably not going to get to seven, doesn't need to though, and um, will be able to try to plan and account for this Iron Hands, which is so, so threatening.
Yes, but one thing I love here about Kamal is the deck bling. Oh my gosh, every time Kamal <laughs> plays, all of these cards are so beautiful. Some of them I can't even tell what they are because I've never even seen an art like that before. But this Colrus's experiment is definitely a recognizable card. Huge card in this deck. It is going to allow Kamal to get an additional two cards into the loss zone as well as three to the hand. And that is what we need to start seeing here for Kamal so that we can start establishing these threats here. And I mean, it seems to be going pretty well. What do you think, Pablo? Yeah, so far so good. We'll be able to use the Drag Cloak ability to Yay. continue to build up that hand, that fantastic ability. It's almost like a flower select, except one card doesn't go to a Lost Zone, which is really, really good. Now we do see that Kamal is playing two copies of Cramorant, which really complement yeah. the, uh, the damage that Dragapult does. Like, Kamal will be able to do 110 this turn if he wants to on this Lugia, and that sets it up perfectly for the follow-up to 100 from Dragapult, and you have that Recon Directive ability to help sustain your deck and get you closer to the cards that you need. Yeah, not to mention, you know, that Cramorant, you're hitting for free as long as you have four cards in the Lost Zone there to unlock that Lost Provisions. So, yeah, it complements this deck perfectly here for Kamal, and I think uh, we're going to start seeing some action if we can line up the cards here, debating the Switch cards. There's two in hand, and it's going to be played to get that Comfey out of the active, and Ooh. Dragapult is actually going to be promoted. Interesting. We're going to see a Jet Headbutt being dealt here, 70 damage, which doesn't quite set up the number, so we'll have to see what Kamal is planning here, probably yeah. trying to protect from the Iron Hands, and because if you go in with True. the Cramorant, then the Iron Hands can easily get to prizes, right? But with it no Minchinos on the board, which Kamal doesn't necessarily know that there's none <laughs> at all, true. right? <laughs> um, then there's that merit of, okay, I want to protect against the one threat that's Iron Hands, and my Dragapult is protected from any sort of Sinchino because there isn't any. But eventually, Kamal will realize that there's actually no Sinchino whatsoever in this deck. I mean, unless Kamal just thinks Alex is doing some very interesting uh, uh, deck choices here, but. Yeah, now we do see that lightning energy, uh, which is another of the peculiar inclusions for Alex, as that allows him to be even more aggressive with Iron Hands. I think Alex is going to try and win without actually dealing with that Dragapult too much. He's going to try and get some of the Go easier around. prizes yeah. on the bench. And he does have a copy of Iron Bundle to do so as well. So we'll have to see if that's what he ends up going for here. Yeah, and look at this, the V-Star power ability here, the summoning star on the Lugia V-Star, bringing that Archeops out of the discard pile here now onto the field. It is a stage two, but it can instantly join us for this fight. <laughs> Thanks to that Lugia V-Star. So we're going to be working with a single Archeops to Primal Turbo accelerate these energies out of the deck onto the field for Alex Kreckler. Yeah, that single Archeops, not the exact way you want to play out your Lugia deck, right? You usually want to have the two, but sometimes the pressure is so immense that you have to work with one. Now, Kamal also knows this, probably will try to take that down at some point in the game. And there's a lot of pressure on Alex, not the ideal setup that he wanted. Yeah, you want to be able to make sure you can debilitate your opponent in any way possible. And the liability of only having one Archeops is potentially huge here in this matchup. Kamal over on this side in our third turn, I believe. And uh, this looks like the... F is this Recon Directive? Okay, cool. So we don't have to put one of these in the Lost Zone here. It's going to go back into deck. And I'm sure that Lost Zone players probably are happy getting a little break from yep. having to <laughs> get rid of, like, half of their decks. So at least we get to save some now. Yeah, it's still a choice of keep one, lose yes. one, but you're not losing it forever, right? You're exactly. losing it to the bottom of the deck, therefore it's accessible <laughs> afterwards. Now, difficult choice here for Kamal, valuing the recovery of Superod, but also valuing the axes that Nespol gives him yeah. to that potential Radiant Charizard to deal with Iron Hands. Now, if Kamal does find that Psychic, another copy though, because there's one already here, we'll be able to play some damage counters on the bench. So we'll have to see if this Colrace finds him that Psychic or a Mirage Gate, as he will now yeah. be going up to seven cards in the Lost Zone. Exactly. We're at five right now. That's going to tick up to seven with these two hitting it. But what do we see here? We do see the reveal of Kamal's A-Spec does have yes, that on first stamp. stamp, which is a very peculiar <laughs> choice. Usually Lost Box decks tend to play Prime Catcher. It's a more aggressive choice. I've even seen Neo Upper Energy, but on first stamp gives Kamal a way to disrupt his opponent's hand, which is not something you usually expect from Lost Box decks in the beginning, yeah. at least not until you're into a Roxanne turn. So 
very nice choice for Kamal. I'm sure will also surprise Alex at some point with that. I think that will be a surprise for sure. And honestly, if you can get rid of a hand for against Lugia and they kind of draw into nothing, it can get real clunky and awkward from there. Of course, you can still accelerate as long as you have that Archeops get energy down. But if you don't have cards to work with, it can get kind of awkward for you. And you're not as fast paced as you'd like to be or being able to carry out certain strategies that you want, as we've already seen kind of happen here with one single Archeops go down onto the field for Alex. So Kamal is into another, uh, or sorry, already did a flower selecting here on that Kumfei, that Dragapult EX back onto the bench now. Yeah, now we are going to see more flower select. Uh, Kamal has a huge mm. hand, but doesn't have the Mirage Gate that he would like to work with to potentially power up another Dragapult. And funnily enough, that 200 damage on the Dragapult uh, he got protection from Iron Hands, but now there's 120 HP left on that Dragapult, which could allow Iron Hands to take it down for three prizes at some point. So that's going to yeah. be a potential issue for Kamal in the future. We'll have to see how he manages that. Yeah, how are our players going to manage these situations? How are things going to turn out here in this first game? But of course, you can kind of re-strategize going into a second, whether it goes either way. But we'll have to see what happens here. Kamal just promoted into that Cramorant off of the switch card. And then we're going to see the energy attachment onto that Dracoloak in on the bench here and then that's going to be it it's that lost provisions being unlocked with four prize cards or more that's going to be 110 damage added to the field onto that lugia v star for kamal yeah, very underwhelming turn for kamal unfortunately couldn't get that extra dragapult going and now alex does have a boss's orders does have access to that archives could potentially uh, chase after the Dracloak, could chase after the Dragapult. Also knows that sitting at 230 HP, there's no threat to his Iron Hand, so he could just take down this Cramorant. So many options for Alex, but the <laughs> crucial thing is yes. he really needs to make the best use of this single Archeops, needs yep. to get two energies into play every single turn. And I think at this point, Kamal will be thinking, hey, where's your Minchinos? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Yeah, what's going on here? What is happening? We're seeing the boss's orders here, and this is that liability we were talking about, Pablo. Dragapult EX being pivoted into the active position from that boss's orders, calling it up. And that's just going to be a knockout here from yeah. the Lugia V-Star. Two prize cards going down for Alex Kreckler, taking the first prize cards in this race to six. Yeah, Alex did not have the extra energy to take down that Dragapult with Iron Hands. Maybe didn't even want to do it as he can now yeah. go for like a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize setup, which is really, really good um, for him. He's now like two turns away from winning the game potentially. Yeah. And at, so far he knows that Kamal's hand uh, is not as great, right? He didn't do anything super significant last turn as he top decks that Mirage Gate. Yeah, the hand, I mean, it's been lackluster over here. And then when you're Kamal looking at your opposing field, it's pretty daunting, honestly, just seeing those Pokemon out on the field, even with the single Archeops, even with no Chinchino, you can see the strength and the uh, variety that Lugia Vsar has as far as attackers. And of course, powered up by those special energy. That is truly the key to this deck. But over on Kamal's side, we have some energy of our own. Mirage Gate is going to be played now that is it is unlocked thanks to that Lost Zone. Woo, here we go, <laughs> Pablo. We love the the dramatics. We love that cinematic. I don't know if I'd be as uh, excited as you are to go to the Lost Zone, Boo, but yeah, <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> Whoa, spooky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we do have that Mirage Gate for a single Psychic. There's one fire prize, one fire in the discard, and one fire in play, so couldn't get the most value out of it. Usually this deck doesn't worry too much. It doesn't yes. have that heavy requirement of Iron Hands or Roaring Moon. It's just two energies for your Dragapults. Now the big issue here for Kamal is going to be finding that Dragapult to have this follow-up yeah. attack, as there's only two copies. One is in the discard pile from the previous KO. We'll see if Comfy can get us there. Yes, let's see indeed. We're going to have another flower select. You got to pick those flowers. One's going away forever. Yep. And the other one goes to your hand. It's going to be that rescue board going into the Lost Zone here. Did you see the card that was picked? I believe it was Roxanne, which is a oh. very key card usually. But against those gift energies, I don't think uh, both Roxanne or Reese's Dam will be as valuable. Oh, no. So I think I would have liked to see Kamal keep that rescue board a little bit to make it a little easier for him to pivot around his yes. calm face. 
I kind of agree with that. You give a little bit more variety to your board and actions that you can play out in the future, but it's gone now. Rescue board in the lost zone. Jet energy is going to be used to pivot that Comfey into the active position from the bench. We're going to see two more cards now, a Buddy Buddy Poffin as well as a technical machine here. Yeah. Hit the lost zone off of that Colrus's experiment. Yeah, another uh, interesting card in Kamal's list that TM Devo that just got sent to Lost Zone. Not the most useful against Lugia, yeah. but will be very useful against other things. As we For see sure. the counter catcher Ooh, on the single Argyps combined with the on first stamp. So I guess if there's no gift energy in the active, that's Love where it. your on first stamp will be the most effective. But Kamal doesn't have any single threat right now to take down that Argyps. So really yeah. needs to find that one off Dragapult DX left in his deck as he also chose not to play the Supra that he had to put some resources back and yeah. that extra copy of Dragapult. We'll have to see if he finds it. Yes, we're going to start to see how unfair the stamp really is this weekend. It's <laughs> been a, it's been a lot of questions, but I mean, it is a, an inter a terribly scary card to be eyeing down if you're facing against it. Of course, if you're, one of your Pokemon was knocked out, you're going to be drawing five cards. Your opponent only draws two. It's a great way to limit their ability to have cards in their hand, but is it going to pay off for Kamal? We're still seeing... More cards go into the Lost Zone here. We did see an evolution there into that Dracolog. But what are you seeing, Pablo? Anything I, that we're I, working with? I don't know what the other card choice was between the Cramorant and the other card. I think <laughs> it might have been the Temple of Sinnoh, which is very yeah. good to shut down all True. those special energies, especially the Legacy. But I don't think we found that Dragapult DX boost, so I don't think that Arkham's is going to go no. down here. That is brutal. Well, One we can maybe save it here on the Dracolog. <gasps> I don't think so. I think no, it would have been an immediate we yeah. grab. Yeah. We would have been seeing it quick there for Kamal. And unfortunately, all of that draw support that we see from this deck has failed so far uh, here for this turn for Kamal. We're just going to see the discard of that jet energy Oof. now. And it's Cramorant back up into the active again, but not even enough damage here to take out that Archaeops. And Alex is able to just accelerates this Iron Hand straight into the active position now, fully loaded up here, and has the legacy energy. I mean, this is brutal. This is really brutal. Boo has the perfect setup in order to take two more prizes against this grammar and go down to yeah. two, and there's so many targets. And once again, there's nothing that threatens that Iron Hands at this point other than the Radiant Charizard, but does Kamal have access to any fire energies? Not at this point. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one over at the prize card. So even responding to this Iron Hands right now yeah. is going to be quite, quite difficult. I totally agree with that. You know, when you're playing Lost Box, you do have the... Uh the benefit that you play a lot of single prizers, but Iron Hands doesn't care <laughs> at all, <laughs> Pablo. It's going to start taking two prize cards off of you, thanks to that amp you very much. And that can lead to quick games here. And Iron Hands is ready to go to start uh, slapping those hands together. Yeah, and speaking of Iron Hands, right, we see another peculiar card for Lugia. Earthen Vessel not only helps discard those Arceus, but also finds you the basic lightning energies yeah. that Alex is playing in this very unique Lugia as he does play a second copy of Iron Hand. So he's basically saying, I don't care about yes, exactly. dealing with your big HP Pokemon. I'm just going to always go after the little people. Oh, poor Cramorant going to the discard pile. Did do a lot of work, but it just wasn't enough, unfortunately. Iron Hand's taking two prize cards. Thanks to that Ampu very much. Alex Kreckler down to only two prize cards left to take in our Swiss round one here at our international championship. Things are looking tough here for Kamal. Still six prize cards left to take. It's it's not looking great, Pablo. It's definitely not looking great. But I mean, Kamal has the ideal response with Temple of Sino plus Radiant Charizard plus Roxanne in hand, but is missing that crucial fire energy. And the only <laughs> way to get a fire energy right now is through Superod. And where's that Superod? In the deck. And then Somewhere. afterwards, you need the Mirage Gate. So yeah. it's not looking great on the odds. And then even if you respond, right, yeah. you are able to respond to that. Then your Charizard goes down to either of the Lugias on the bench. You're not able to take advantage of the previous damage you dealt on the Arceus. So it's yes. scaling a little bit too much for Kamal. Now, Temple of Sino plus Roxanne will still be very good and yeah. might even stop Iron Hands from attacking next turn. But Kamal finding the response. He does find the Super Rod, I believe. Oh, yeah, it looks like it. It's gold. That is for sure a Super Rod there, yep. Pablo. There and it's Super Rod. Yeah, it's going to be kept. Of course, the other card going to the bottom, thanks to that Dracloak. 
Yeah, so we'll be able to actually get the perfect response. Temple of Sinnoh, Roxanne. Beautiful. And does need to use the Mirage Gate right now. I think I would have liked to see him retreat first mm -hmm. um, before playing the Supra. That way he get could have recovered yeah. uh, an additional energy. Either of these would have been fine. Probably a Psychic, so you can reattach it. So True. a small, uh, perhaps uh, not a mistake, just a way to get more out of your cards, you know? Yeah. Yep, it was just going to be uh, that single energy coming back into the deck here for Kamal. Of course, Mirage Gate is going to allow Kamal to get that energy right back out and go straight on to that Radiant Charizard here on the bench. And now that Radiant Charizard will be able to handle that Iron Hands. The Temple of Sinnoh shutting down the Legacy Energy, so Woo. you will be getting two prize cards off that. And, and here we, we see go. the Rock Sandwich <laughs> also. Uh, like we talked about gift energy but yeah. it's not activated right now so if kamal's gonna make a comeback it's gonna be thanks to this perfect combo that he just pulled off yep a little bit different there from the unfair stamp and of course it's in a supporter as well kamal's gonna be getting six cards here and alex only two yep. let's see what these six cards are here for kamal but i think even more importantly what is alex getting in the other side of the field as well Wow, Ooh. double well, Dragapult. Well, there's the Dragapult, huh? <laughs> double Dragapult, double bosses orders as well. Sheesh. We'll be able to use another Recon Directive and find a Switch card, which is very nice. important. Still to utilize Radiant Charizard in back-to-back -back turns. So yeah. with boss, with the Dragapult, with, with the Switch. hands. If Alex doesn't have a great combination of cards in his hand, oh. Kamal could pull a comeback here, Boo. Yeah, I think so indeed, Pablo. I'm excited to see Ooh. what happens here. I, I don't know. Ooh, conserving the energy on ah. that Dragapult, but now it might make it a little bit harder for this Radiant Charizard to get back-to-back -back attacks. Oh, so we'll wow. have to see if how this uh, ends up affecting the next few turns. Yep, at least getting that Iron Hands EX off the field now here for Kamal. First prize cards down. Alex promoting that Lugia V-Star that is very unhealthy at the moment. We're going to see the Serena discarding that Drapion V. <laughs> Another interesting card <laughs> into the discard pile here for some additional cards into the hand. So that's a little bit of recovery after that Roxanne. But what are we working with here? I mean, I guess if your Charizard was going to go down, uh, keep it using the switch was actually uh, better. But yeah, Alex drew the boss disorders that he needs for next turn, right? He's going to take a knockout on this Radiant Charizard right now. And then the next Lugia or potentially the Blood Moon or Saluna could just win this game. Now, <laughs> we see the Jet Energy and... Because of Temple of Sinnoh, this double turbo energy doesn't work right now. So Lugia oh, yeah. cannot attack unless Alex attaches an energy from hand. I'm not sure if he found one. He might have, I think, the basic lightning. I think it was lightning, yeah. All right. So if, if he attaches it to active, then he's going to be all right. He does. Yeah, yes. we see it. Alex, <laughs> very aware of that Temple of Sinnoh. Yeah, Temple of Sinnoh, huge card. We're going to be seeing a lot of it this weekend. It turns any special energy into just one single colorless energy. So that double turbo doesn't count for much there at that point. Removes those effects. And Alex Kreckler is going to have the recovery there. Thank goodness to uh, that lightning energy. Going to be able to take those prize cards. Go down to one here. And it's just back to back from these players. It really is back to back. Alex just shows the jet energy Ooh. that he's going to be able to uh, get the win next turn. Kamal not able to. Speaking of these Pokemon that are so interesting this matchup, the Weird Air V as well as that Iron Bundle are actually in the prize cards this time around for Alex. And they're at the top of the prize cards as well. And look at this as well, Pablo. Yeah. The double turbo down onto this Lugia V. That's at least something here, but nothing. Uh, not even a single card was played into the discard pile here for Alex. And we're over to Kamal now. Buddy Buddy Poffin, fantastic card to have on your first turn so you can start establishing these Pokemon. We need to get these cards into the Lost Zone off of these Comfey as well. So it's looking good over on Kamal's side and maybe Alex... Uh, <laughs> has one of those clunky hands we talked about. <laughs> yeah, now uh, we can see that hand, right? We know it's a little bit clunky yes. now. If you're sitting down in Kamal's spot, though, uh, a, an attached pass from a Lugia player can be sometimes a exactly. little bit deceiving because they could just have a supporter and two Archives waiting to be discarded, <laughs> yeah. right? So you can't really count your bananas. blessings yeah, <laughs> until you get a little bit more information. But yeah, Alex's hand leaves a lot to be desired at this point. We'll be able to get one Archives in the discard pile, but not much else. We're probably going to see a read the wind. Now, we did see Kamal prize his Radiant Charizard, so that's his best response to Iron Hands and He's going to have a little bit of trouble accessing it, at least in the beginning. 
but we're going to see how Kamal is able to set this up. Yeah, and we're getting set up for sure here for Kamal. Three cards now in the last zone, and that's going to be four after this additional uh, flower select here off of this active Comfe. Of course, having that Colrus's experiment going second is huge as well for this deck. So hopefully we can see the tides change a little bit here in this game too, and the aggression is going to fall to Kamal versus Alex, uh, being able to take those first prize cards and Ooh. just keep up the pace. Amazing top deck by Alex, oh. that Jack supporter that will allow him to find the second Archeops and the Lugia V-Star yeah. right now. Now, it's an interesting situation for Alex. Does he choose to discard one Archeops with the Earth and Vessel and then read the win the second Archeops? Or the, does he decide to play with a single Archeops once again and start yeah. applying that immediate pressure? You know, I'm starting to think maybe it's a part of the strat. I don't know, Pablo. I don't play Lugia. <laughs> Especially not this list, that is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to see what Alex is going to choose to do here. But yeah, that Jock is huge. Being able to get those evolution Pokemon out, that's going to give Alex things to work with here for this turn. So Earth and Vessel is going to be able to discard this Archeops. Nice and easy peasy, perfect Ooh. discard here. And I'm telling you, Pablo, is it the strat? Am I missing something? I mean, <laughs> I think Alex just recognizes that Kamal has very few options to deal with an early Iron Hand. Yeah. He will be able to power it up right now with that lightning energy that he found off the Earthen Vessel. So I thought because he started shuffling after the Earthen Vessel, he was not going to go for it. But then he immediately goes for it, yes. wants to go for that early amp you very much, thanks to a double turbo. And even though it's going to do 100 instead of 120, there's no Pokemon that can survive that attack next turn, other than a rare candy Dragapult, which is really difficult to pull off, or yeah, the Radiant Charizard, which is not available. So Alex off to the races here. Exactly. This is huge here for Alex, and it really just shows you the difference in the different types of builds of decks. Lugia V-Star, even with just an attached pass, not a single card played. Top decks, amazing card, and then is going here. And look <laughs> at this board state now. Just as we thought Kamal maybe had a little bit of, of legs to work with, or work on, I should say, for these upcoming turns. Now we're on the back foot completely here. Alex Kreckler with an Iron Hands in the active position. Tons of energy loaded up onto it and taking multiple prize cards as well. And the poor Comfe, just trying to just trying to pick some flowers here, Pablo. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not uh, amused by having an Iron Hand ZX right in front of it. Now, <laughs> know, right? did have to pick between a Colrus and a Nest Ball. I think Kamal was eyeing up the Nest Ball, perhaps because he's considering the response with Radiant Charizard. I'm not sure if he was very thorough with his price checking to realize that it yeah. is not available. But another great response here, he already has the Rare Candy and the Dragapult. So with a Mirage Gate, he will be able to deal a lot of damage and also prevent their hands from taking yeah. an extra two prizes unless there's a boss's order. So we'll have to see. And also found the unfair stamp. Yeah, and we haven't had any issues here, thank goodness. Getting into the Lost Zone, uh, we are, we're up to seven now there. Dragapult EX is going to be evolved on the bench here. We're going to be joined by a few more Pokemon. And honestly, we, al we also have a lot of cards to work with in the hand. We do. We have a lot of cards to work with, as you mentioned. Boo, there's on first stamp, there's switch card, there's counter catcher as well. So Kamal could try to disable and knock out the only yeah. Archeops disabled, Lugia's engine as well. But he's missing the crucial Mirage Gate. Doesn't have a way to deal oh any gosh. significant damage at this point in time. Uh, well, I think we're going to select some more flowers here. See what we can get. Is it going to pay off here for Kamal? Ah, it doesn't think so. doesn't look like it. I think it it's looks temple like a cramorant. And cramorant yeah. yeah. Cramorants and that Temple of Sinnoh. Ooh. Temple is gonna join the Lost Zone there now, bringing us up to eight and Cramorant going into the hands now for Kamal. And it's just like that. All of the hope we have kind yeah. of diminishes here, Pablo. It, yeah, I hate to see it. It's all gonna come down to this unfair stamp when I think you have to commit to it. You wanna yeah. thin as much as you can, bench that Cramorant, bench that Sableye, play the counter catcher, and hope for the best with this unfair stamp that we yeah. don't see the benching of those attackers. I really would have liked to see Kamal maximize his chances of finding that Mirage Gate. Well, those attackers are now being shuffled back into the deck here. Both of our players shuffling up, but Kamal is going to be able to draw, draw five cards where Alex just gets only two. But Alex has been drawing some pretty good cards lately. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, look at this artwork, too. This is the most disrespectful artwork I've ever seen, Pablo. <laughs> look at this. It's like, oh, your hand? Nope, not today. <laughs> Draw two, buddy. <laughs> That's brutal to see. It is, yeah. On first stamp is a very on first card. Uh, uh, on first <laughs> card, it seems. It now. is, it is. The, the cool thing for Alex, though, is that he hasn't played a single supporter other than Jack to help his setup, but does find the rush gate. Kamal will be able wow. to take on the Archimps, and Alex immediately scoops the game. Oh my goodness, Pablo. Is that how you expected this to go? I Holy did not smokes. know. Kamal having everything ready to go. Yeah, now very oh rough gosh. prizes what here the? for both players. Two fire energy prize for Kamal, two Archimps, and wow. the Jack prize for Alex, so that could make it a little difficult. Like, your goal is to discard two Archimps. When yeah. there's only two out of your four, that makes it a little bit more difficult to pull off. Yeah, it could definitely be kind of hard to get everything you need in hand to be able to actually discard them. But we'll we'll have to see if that comes into play here. But for Kamal, this Nest Ball is going to start us off getting a Dreepy down. Of course, going into the deck, looking at all of the cards available and those prize cards that we just saw as well. And the Kumpay starting in the active position. Now, I always advise players, the easiest thing to check on your prizes are the energy, because that's usually what you play the most of. Yeah. So then the first thing you check is that. And if you price energies, that's the easiest to find out. So I'm sure Kamal just figured out that there's two fire sprites. He's going to need to keep that other fire yes. uh, as, his, as if his life depended on it. <laughs> yes, exactly. You have to manage these resources, but all of our Lost Box players do that fairly well, I want to say, because otherwise they probably wouldn't be playing this deck, that yep. is for sure. <laughs> Our second Gumfei coming into the active position for an additional flower Ooh. selecting. Two cards right now in the Lost Zone. That was a body body puff and oh. a Sableye. Tough choice for Kamal. It is the only copy of Sableye, so there won't be any Lost Mine this game. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that spices things up as well here in this game at three between our players. Another JP coming out here thanks to that Buddy Buddy Poffin as well as another Comfey. So we're seeing kind of the same board setup we've seen so far from yeah. Kamal. Let's see if it pays off once again here in these future turns. Alex Kreckler starting with the Iron Hands in the active position and having to play. Finally, we see the fish coming out onto the field, this Luminion using that ability to search out a uh, supporter card with Luminous Sign. Yeah, now Alex's hand very underwhelming, full of supporters, full of energies, and we'll even use this Luminion to dedicate to search for another supporter, but we'll qu quickly find out that there's no Jack available. Not that he wanted to use it this turn, but there's yeah. no Jack available, and there's only two Archeops. I don't think, as a Lugia player, you ever check how many Archeops you actually prize, because yeah. you always just expect them to be there. Uh, but yeah, this could be bad four. news for <laughs> Alex. Yeah, because yeah. there's no guarantee of a Lugia V even hitting exactly. the field right now. It's seven cards. That's what you have to work with. They're completely random. So we'll see what fate has in store here for Alex. Yeah, not to mention the more you have to discard with these awkward hands, the more resources you're losing in the future. And then you start to have to resource management as far as keeping track of which energies are going to be going down, which ones have you kept so far. We're seeing one of those missed energy go onto this Iron Hands in the active, but the rest of these cards in hand are going to the discard pile now. Off of that professor's research, we're going to see a fresh hand of seven cards for Alex. Did find at least an Ultra Ball. And there's also the Mesagoso Stadium. So more coin flips coming Woo! our way as we see the tails, Aww. unfortunately. And it's not yeah. capturing a Roman, right? I was about to say. So <laughs> it's going to be a very underwhelming turn once again for Alex. His hand is not Brutal. great. He's going to be able to bench a Lugia, which is like the, min the bare minimum you want to do on turn one. But then he has nothing to follow that up. I know. And so much in the discard pile now. Just under 13 minutes left for our players to get through this game. And it is looking clunky and Awkward so far here for Alex. I mean, you hate to see it. it's just a pass over to Kamal now. And uh, this board is looking pretty nice here for Kamal. We're going to see the flower selectings. We're going to see that Lost Zone tick up here as well. And of course, you'd want to make sure you don't forget that stadium. You're now in the Mesa Goza. <laughs> yeah, your opponent was so kind of them to play that. Yeah, I know, Might right? as well try to take advantage <laughs> yourself. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, it was a tails there, but I always happen to forget that stadium, so I'm glad Kamal did not this time around. <laughs> but yes, we're, we're getting through this deck now. We're seeing more cards hit the Lost Zone off of that Colrus's experiment, so three additional cards in the hand. We're starting to stack up a ton of resources here, and it's just going to be more thanks to this flower selecting. Now, if you're Kamal and you look at your opponent's side of the field with no Lugia in play, that's so, so good for you. Yeah. So Kamal definitely knows there's no threat of Iron Hands coming next turn. He really wants to take advantage of this and be as aggressive as possible. Yeah. But he also knows that if he isn't able to apply any pressure, that's not horrible. But now is the perfect time to try to use Cramorant if he's able to find it, setting up the damage for a follow-up Dragapult EX. But no Dracloaks found, no uh, Cramorant yet. We'll have to see if he's able to find something from this Flower Select. You want to play it safe. You want to work through what the long-term game looks like for both of these players. That is what Kamal is doing right now. Lasso now up to seven here. Just a pass from Kamal. No aggression, no drag cloak. So getting to Dragapult is going to be difficult as Alex top decks. Yeah, that's another tough. Another energy not ideal for him. Uh. Oh my gosh, now, Mesa Goza. Oof, uh, finally <laughs> gets a head slip. That's huge. That, uh, yeah, that was huge. There's the first Archeops into the hand. The one of two available. And now, what will Alex decide? Ultra yeah. will away this Archeops to get Luminion, to get another research, to get an Iono perhaps, or just establish the Lugia and continue to be in top deck mode. He has some tough decisions here, and we're about to get a little insight on what the strategy is going to be. That Luminion uh, brought up to the active position here. Of course, the Iono sought out of the deck as well to make sure it's there. And that is what is going to hit the bench here. Now we have two fish, Pablo, on the, onto the field. Of course, that Iono is going to be the choice off that Luminous sign, bringing us another supporter. But I mean, as far as Lugia decks the, go, uh, we have yet to even see a Lugia here. So thankfully, Alex is going to have a lot more to work with now. But this is like still looking very awkward. Yeah, very awkward indeed. There's at least one Archeops over here, right? Yes. But yeah, the two Luminians could also be liabilities. We Woo! do find the Lugia V finally hitting the board. Ah. So our Lugia deck starting to look like a Lugia <laughs> like a deck. Lugia deck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. we can breathe a sigh of relief now. That Lugia V is down. That is what Alex needs here. The Iron Hands additionally being powered up here with that yeah. double turbo energy. So. It's getting closer. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, we're ticking down the clock here for our players. Speaking of which, nine minutes and 30 seconds for both of our players. Thankfully, we do finally have a Dracloak here. So we're going to see that Recon Directive getting some more cards here for Kamal, as well as the second or first flower selecting for the turn. Yeah, that Iono was such a blessing for Kamal. Uh, he didn't have any like useful pieces in his hand. Now he found the Dracloak also has the rare candy, so could potentially have finally a Dragapult attacking and be the aggressor this time around yes. before Alex. Now one Colrus did go to the bottom of the deck, which I think is fine for Kamal as he's just looking now to be able to find the combination of Mirage Gate plus Dragapult, though I'm not sure he was able to find it. He hasn't used them as a Goza yet, I believe. There we Here go. Here we go. So we could see that Dragapult being found this turn. Oh. No. <laughs> the tails every time here for <laughs> Kamal, unfortunately. Yeah. But hey, let's see if we can get something here off of the second Dracloak. Yeah, now evolving there does mean that there's not going to be yeah. Dragapult DX hitting the board right now. You got to wait a whole turn. <laughs> yeah, another opportunity for uh, Cramorant to potentially be aggressive, but there's True. no Cramorant found yet either. So, fortunately for Kamal, mm. not the best uh, start to take advantage of Alex's low setup. Well, TM Devolution hitting the last zone very quickly there off of that second flower selecting here for Kamal. Now, we thought we were done with the coin flips, mm. but we still have one more crucial one. The flip for um, capturing Aroma is going to be super important. If it's head flip, it could allow Alex to finally have two Archeops in play. But the Temple of Sinnoh will potentially prevent Alex from even doing anything with yeah. the Iron Hands on virtually. There's no counter stadium available to him right now. Yeah, the Mesa Goza is out of play now. Temple of Sinnoh, the gold version, in play from <laughs> Kamal's side. So shutting down those special energy, turning them into just single colorless energy that we're working with. Kamal sending a Colrus's experiment into the Lost Zone here now for a Mirage Gate, I believe, going to the hand. Yeah, Mirage Gate, very crucial. 
was one piece away essentially to yeah. be able to attack with Dragapult DX, that very same Dragapult. So that coin flip on the Mesa is so, so big. All Ooh. right, Skrull <laughs> capturing Aroma. We're seeing Tails all day here. So that is a basic Pokemon for Alex Kreckler. Yeah, you can see him. Uh, nodding and yeah. like he's, Disbelief, he's not amused yeah, yeah he's not amused <laughs> not by amused. so many tail flips uh so far does find that extra copy of iron hands but now he has once again to decide do i play with a single archives do i not and even if he, he gets archives because legacy energy is shut down yeah. right now and there's no counter stadium iron hands cannot attack at this point and your jet energy is also shut down so it's not like you can potentially bring something up and attack with that so temple of sino really putting a dent into Alex's plans on top of that tail slip on the capturing aroma. And that's what's interesting about this. Kamal hasn't been putting the pressure on as far as damage on board, as far as aggression with attacks. But the cards that have been mounting into the hand for Kamal is allowing for the setup. And Alex just cannot piece things together. It is so awkward here. And we're just going to have to keep churning through these turns in a really awkward way for Alex. We're back to Kamal now. But this is the time to shine. Can we finally get where we need to start putting the aggression as far as attack? go onto this field because that could be huge if Kamal can take things down in this turn. Yeah, both decks are usually very aggressive and so far we haven't seen aggression from either one. Yeah. Alex's very slow setup and bad hands and we see Kamal oh. finally hit yes. that Dragapult DX. There's also a Mirage Gate in hand so yeah. as long as there's a way to retreat that Comfey, we will be able to see Dragapult DX finally attack and also be the first one attacking but I think there's only one energy in the deck who... No way! What? Yep. The uh, psychic, it, one psychic is here. I believe another yeah, I think psychic one's is in the, here. The lost zone. And I don't know where the third is. It might be in Kamal's hand. I was so about to say, is it in hand? That would Please. still be fine. <laughs> yep, there's one psychic okay. everywhere. I don't, there were two fire sprites. Yeah, yeah it's the in psychic's hands. in okay. hand. All right, so we will be able to see um, the Dragon Bolt powered up. But can we see the Comfe retreat? Because Kamal played this rescue board down before, assuming the Comfe active Ooh, was going to go look down. At this tough choice here as well but it's also i mean one card goes to the bottom so i think you want to keep uh, okay. the call res yeah recon directive it. Okay. yeah it wasn't the flower select <laughs> so it's a little uh easier but kamal really needs to find a way to retreat this comfe yes, did we... he find it ah oh, well the mana fee going into the lost zone but what do we see as far as I the cards think we did. no wait oh There's no lost yeah. vacuum, nope mirage gate and iron bundle now no way wow. to repeat this turn. There's serious? one more Ritcon directive. Oh, please. Can we get something here no. for Kamal? Oh, no. It's just going to be the boss's orders going into the hands. The other card being sent to the bottom here. We don't have the pivot, Pablo. We don't. It's going to be another turn where what? neither player is able. Oh, OK. No, Kamal's just going to be aggressive and go for the jet. Headbutt. <sighs> I mean, it's damage, I suppose. Oh, OK. He's going to go super odd. Put back the energies now and commit a oh, second Mirage Gate to this. So, hey, not the most efficient way to do it, but you're you getting finally it done. got there. You're getting it <laughs> done. We are going to see this energy hit the field now, activating that Phantom Dive attack here from the Dragapult EX. Iconic attack in the trading card game that is joining us here from the Twilight Masquerade. And finally, we get to see it play out here in this match. Only three minutes left on the clock for both of our players. But at least we have the damage on board here. And all the pressure is now on Alex Kreckler. All the pressure indeed, Boo. There's no good card. There was a missed energy top deck, I believe. Uh, Alex can find the Lugia V-Star. Protect from this Lugia getting knocked out. Potentially establish a second Archeops. But, I mean, establish a single Archeops. Yeah. But this is not the setup you want as Alex. And the jet energy is not working. He just passes. Oh. This is so tragic to see here. Unfortunately for Alex, just shaking the head. Now we see the boss's orders promoting that Lugia V into the active position here from Kamal. And this, oh, that's going to be yep. it, Pablo. Alex shaking Kamal's hands here, giving the first win of NAIC to Kamal Crooks Valdez and Dragable EX. You love to see it. Wow, what a game we just saw. A very original 
looking at Liz, not having the Sinchinos trying to like be a little bit more streamlined in that way, but a single Temple of Sinnoh completely shut down Alex, combined with yeah. his less than ideal draws, right? He had to dedicate two Luminions to be able to get set up, and he wasn't even able to accomplish.